You are listening to another TOSCast in a series of podcasts between myself, Total OS Today from the United States, and Infinitely Galactic from Australia. If you haven't already, please check out the previous TOSCast between myself and IG. And for this topic, we are going to be taking a look at some of our favorite best apps, at least in our humble opinion. So at this time, let me transfer the microphone to Infinitely Galactic. So really, when it comes down to applications, there are bucket loads that, uh, that, that we use on an everyday basis, and it's kind of hard to limit down to a, a list of favorite ones or best ones that, uh, that we would recommend to everyone else. Uh, obviously, if you're running any sort of distribution like, uh, well, Ubuntu specifically or Fedora or any of those, you're going to have heaps to choose from, and it's sometimes hard to sort out uh, the good stuff from the garbage. And uh, so, I mean, the rating system that is coming along in some software centers is kind of helping with that. But, uh, but in the meantime, uh, we're just going to suggest a few ones that we have found uh, to be uh, very helpful in our everyday, what we do every day. Um, so that this is going to range from office software to multimedia stuff to well, pretty much every corner of uh, every corner of the software realms. Um, so I mean, I'll, I'm guess I'm, I'll start out with one, and okay. uh, that's yeah. one um, a video encoder uh, called uh, Transmageddon Video Encoder. Um, now, it's uh, I mean. According to some of the ratings in the in the software center, some people bag on it, saying it's it's a nice concept, but it doesn't work. Other people say it works perfectly. So I'm not really sure what the deal is there. I think it all depends on what codecs you have installed. But um, this particular video transcoder is a very nice tool as far as just taking a, a simple video and encoding it uh, or trans um, transcoding it to whatever device that you might have. Uh, you know, that you need to encode it to. So it supports heaps and heaps and heaps of different uh, file formats and containers. So uh, anytime you download a video off the net or, uh, or if you have a, a, like a ripped DVD or something like that, you can easily encode it to, to, a, uh, to a third codec for your phone or for your iPod or something like that. Um, so, I mean, it has a lot of options here and it uh, keeps it very simple. It has some very nice presets uh, for different devices. Um, so, I mean, between Transmageddon Video Transcoder and Arista Transcoder, those two are ones that I use quite often, um, just because they are they are very device friendly. They have a lot of um, they have a lot of device presets reloaded, a lot of different Android phones, a lot of Sony devices and Apple devices, etc. Um, so that's so that's definitely okay. my first app pick. So uh, go for it. I'll okay. transfer it back over to you. All righty. Yeah, I am I am familiar with Transmageddon. Great title, by the way. Uh, I have used it in the past. Uh, it seems okay. Um, but for my first pick, uh, everybody knows this one: VLC Media Player. This has been around since uh, what World War II, but uh, now it's been around quite a long time. Uh, it is cross-platform for both uh, Linux-based OS uh, systems and Windows, uh, you know, of course. Uh, as far as when I'm you know, running Linux, whether it's uh, Linux Mint, Zorn, or Ubuntu, this is my first choice. It's it works great. It's stable. It plays every kind of media format that you can throw at it, at least that I'm aware of. It is my first choice of media player in a Linux-based operating system, and I use it in Windows 7. Uh, if I'm not using Windows Media Player 12, which is my first choice, but really. Media player is more of an, you know, more of a media organizer uh, that works most of the time. But if I run issues for whatever reason, a media player, uh, I use VLC. It's never let me down. It's constantly updated. Uh, last year, it added support for HD, and if I recall, it was the very first time using a Linux-based OS that I was able to play HD videos almost 100% smoothly thanks to VLC. So that is my first choice on my list of favorite apps. So what is your and, second one? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just a quick comment on VLC. I mean, yeah. they've, uh, they, they are really a flagship open source project. Um, yes. They have done amazing things. 
Uh, and uh, honestly, out of every single piece of software I have ever encountered, I have recommended VLC to people the most because I can just say, go to this website, download it, and you can guarantee it's going to play nearly everything under the sun. And people really appreciate that. So, um, and I mean, it's free and it's open source. So, I mean, you really can't complain. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, second, my second thought was uh, email clients. And uh, although there are a few email clients under um, under Linux, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest two, um, depending on what you what you need. If you need something more like a Microsoft Outlook type thing, where you need calendars and you need to do lists and uh, contacts and all that fun stuff, then uh, definitely you can't go past Thunderbird. But uh, but everybody kind of knows that one anyway, and uh, with the integration that it's been receiving from the the Unity team with Ubuntu, it is um, really shaping up to be a very nice uh, email client. Uh, on the other hand, you have a uh, you have an application which belongs to the elementary um, development project known as Postler or P O S T L E R, and uh, and it's a very lightweight app. It's very simple, but it handles email very very elegantly, and um, and it's very quick too. So um, that's that's generally my first choice when it comes to email clients. Again, most people have web-based email anyway, yeah, so they yeah. don't. They you know email clients are becoming a bit of a thing of the past. But just having, um, I mean, having Postler just it's practically running in the background all okay. the time. Uh, it's it's very minimal resources, but it just pops up and ping. You've got another message, and okay. um, and it's you know it's very minimalist. It's very stylish. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely one okay. of my um, that's okay. definitely one of my app choices. Yeah, that that one is not on my list, but it sure sounds uh, simple and user friendly. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, and it's quite good looking to boot, so that's always nice. Cool. Okay. Well, I would like to, for my part, stay on the multimedia theme, uh, screencasting software. Um, lately, uh, really since wow, six seven months ago, maybe more Kazam Screencaster. I believe it came out late last fall. I do believe. Uh, so far for me, it's very simple, minimalistic, nothing fancy, but it gets the job done, at least for me. You know, I, as a Windows slash Linux dual booter, you know, I enjoy using both operating systems and I prefer, usually prefer something simple over, shall I say, complicated. Kazam is as simple as they come, really very few options, but that's okay. It gets the job done. If I can mention one that I've been trying out for the last two weeks, one is it's it's called uh, let's see, it's called Tibesti. T I B E S T I. Um, I'm not going to recommend that yet because I haven't really tried it enough to recommend if it's stable or not. It does have more options on it. It appears to work okay. But for now, I'm going to stick with Kazam. So someone out there who wants to get into, you know, making videos and wants to try a screencaster that's very lightweight, simple, uh, I will recommend Kazam Screencaster. Yes, definitely a good recommendation. It was a, it was very much a time saver for me. Um, nowadays, when I do my screencast, I generally just use. Um, I use FFmpeg, which is actually just the, the back-end tool of what Kazam uses. So, um, I mean, I still use the same technology that uh, that Kazam makes incredibly simple. Yes. But um, generally speaking, I'll just run it through the run it through the command line, and that way, if I have a new distribution, I just have to install okay. FFmpeg and the the H.264 encoder, okay. and you're away. I do use the terminal commands occasionally, but of course, me being a simple Windows user, I am not a big fan of the terminal. I once cracked a joke. The only, the only terminal that I really like using is the terminal at the Orlando International Airport. Thank you very much. Now, yes, clap, 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 clap. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is it your turn or my turn? I lost track. <laughs> yeah. So did I. Um, no, I, uh, hang on a minute. I think, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's I think it's my turn. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a little power management application that uh, that I found quite handy, and that's uh, Jupiter Jupiter Power Manager, and uh, and it's it's quite useful for uh, the laptop side of things. And uh, honestly, 
really all it is is it's just a little device that sits up in your system tray uh, or sits down in your system tray, depending, of course. But basically, it's just uh, it just helps you save battery life. So I mean, it just has quick links to performance modes, so you can say power saver, high performance, or maximum performance. And you also have device control, so you can shut down your Wi-Fi or um, things all from this all from this little menu. Uh, and also, you can change like your screen resolution, your screen orientation, your video displays, all from just a little menu that sits in your system tray. So, uh, and obviously, when you unplug your laptop from the wall, it will automatically kick into Power Saver, and it gives you um, you know your CPU temperature and things like that. So it, it's uh, it's a very helpful little application. I've noticed it gets uh, it, get, it usually gets a good twenty. 20 25 minutes more out of my uh, mm. out of my already drained um 17 inch <laughs> laptop battery so it's it's helpful i mean it is geared towards the gnome desktop and there are ppas uh for that you can use for okay. ubuntu um it does come standard on a few distributions uh pingy uh, pingy os um and i think Fuduntu use it out okay. of the box but um yeah okay. that's a very nice little utility that uh, that i definitely recommend I have to be honest. I have never heard of that. Uh, I'm assuming it's 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 simple to use for us dual booters, meaning that it has a GUI interface and you don't have to use the command terminal. I'm assuming it's yes, that's okay. correct. Once you once you add the PPA, uh, then it's just a matter of installing through the software center, and uh, and then once you've uh, then it, it's just a little icon that just sits in your system tray, and okay. uh, and it's just got just menu options, performance modes, device control, screen resolutions, orientation, video displays, and hmm. that's it. I may have to try that so, out. So it's it's called just as you say, Jupiter Power Manager, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Well, let's see. I have a list here, but you know what? I'm I may just just stay on the multimedia theme. So let's go to the last one of my list, at least for this Toscast, Kden Live. I have tried, experimented with different type of editing software in, you know, Ubuntu, Linux, Zorn. You know what? It's they're not very good, or at least, at least not for me. But Kden Live, Kden Live comes to as close as a polished video video editor that I have seen in a Linux based system and when I do edit the videos you know sometimes if they're five minutes or less I'll just you know post them as they are but when they're longer like tutorials and how to fix this or that or install this or that this is the only one that you know that I use now you know when it works when it doesn't crash and it does occasionally it's awesome as a Windows dual booter it's I think it's extremely easy to use um, it works, it's fast, and when it doesn't crash, it works the way it should. Um, I don't know. It seems to me that Kden Live is probably the premier video editor for Linux. What do you say? Yep. Uh, really, I would have said Kden Live years ago, uh, but I, uh, seeing as it was on your list, I let you say it. But seriously, I could not do what I do on an everyday basis if it weren't for Kden Live. Okay. Uh, that was one of the that was one of the initial reasons that I started experimenting with Linux, simply because I wanted a video editor that wasn't going to cost me hundreds. And um, yes. Kaden Live filled that role, and you know I've seen it de uh, being developed over the last you know two years that I've been using it, and uh, you know it just keeps getting better and better. And yes. um, you know it does it does occasionally crash, but now it kind of has auto recover features, so you can usually bring back your work just from the last five minutes, which is uh, which is relieving most times. Um, but oh my goodness, uh, I mean Kaden Live, I would not be I would not be able to do hard of what I do as far as the YouTube channel is concerned. I do a right. bit of video work otherwise uh, if it weren't for Caden Live. So okay. definitely major props to the people that make Caden Live. Caden Live is a very impressive application. Uh, and for anybody who wants to do any sort of serious video work, I definitely recommend it. Uh, if you want a more user-friendly, as in a more iMovie-ish type video editor, um, have a look at OpenShot. Uh, OpenShot Video Editor is very nice as well. It's got quite a rapid development cycle, and they've been doing some good things with that as well. Uh, it's not quite what I need, um, so I don't use it that often. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's there for those who just like to cut together home movies. Okay, yeah, I I totally agree with Kaden about Kaden Live. You know, when it works, when it doesn't crash, it's you know it's terrific. So uh, yeah, those are our uh, choices uh, for some of our best or favorite apps that we like to use. I guess I should make a point out that for all my, uh, 
I mean, in my channel, I you know I focus on both Windows and Linux, and I guess I haven't been quite fair to my Linux, or I'm I'm sorry to my Windows uh, listeners out there. So maybe sometime in the future, if if IG will join me, maybe we can talk about some of our favorite Windows apps. I mean, like if that's okay with you. I mean, I don't know. It's yeah, that's fun. totally fine. No, okay. Generally speaking. With um, I mean, uh, I do app, uh, I do app reviews every week on my channel, and I generally like to choose ones that are cross-platform for you know Windows and Linux and possibly even Mac if I can. Okay. Um, and so it's actually surprising how many open-source projects are out there that are cross-platform. So that's yes. definitely worth looking into. That's a very good point. There are who knows how many that go both you know both for Linux and Windows. So yeah, so for the Windows folks out there, I have not forgotten you. And uh, we will do something, you know, like maybe favorite, you know, Windows apps sometime in the future. Okay, I think that this will wrap it up for some of our favorite apps, uh, mainly Linux apps, although VLC is cross-platform for both, and we both like that. Okay, I think that will wrap, wrap this up. Thank you so much to all of you, all the viewers and listeners out there who listen to these TOSCasts. We enjoy doing them. As a reminder, please check out both channels, Total OS Today, Infinitely Galactic, and the TotalOSToday.blogspot.com. I forgot to ask you, do you have a separate web page, website, blog that you do, or just, just the channel here? Uh uh, just the main channel here at the moment. Uh, I am. Uh, I only just started up on Google Plus. I got an invite from somebody, so okay. I'll, uh, I'll I'll probably be putting links to uh, a, a Google Plus account uh, in the near future. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you very much to all of you. And signing off from the United States is Total OS today, and from Australia. Infinitely Galactic. Thank you again for having me on the show, and uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, to discussions in the future. Uh, yeah, I mean, favorite apps are always going to be there. So if you have any recommendations that uh, that you good listeners out there have uh, come across, feel free to leave comments on uh, on either uh, Total OS Today's webpage, YouTube channel, or my YouTube channel. I will. I do have a Google Plus account that I will be putting links to uh, sooner or later on my channel when I get around to it. But uh, yeah, that's all from me, so I shall say goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.